G'day yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the yarn corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Friday, December the 3rd, 2021, and this is video number 132. How are you all doing? I hope well. As you can tell by my little crafting corner here, I have set up some string lights and I've put up some ornaments and my stocking has like little lovely nuggets here of yarn. So I hope everyone's feeling their holiday season coming on and, you know, gearing up for their wonderful celebrations and enjoying the holiday season. So what have I got today? I've got some finished objects to show, some whips, and also some happy mail. I have a life talk as well, what I've been up to. So me and my husband, Chad, live in a community that is new to us because we've just moved in and we've been doing some things that I want to share with you in the community as well, as well as around the house. So we've set up our Christmas tree and we've done the decorations and stuff like that. So all of that fun stuff will be at the end of the video. I'll push up all the yarny goodness and all of the makes to the front of the video. So if you are inclined to just be here for those, they'll be presented in the front. So uh, yeah, and if you wanna stick around to find out what's been going on in our community, please do, you're most welcome to. So, okay, I should introduce myself to those people who are just new to the channel. My name's Gary, and I've set up this channel to talk about all of my yarny adventures. That's in knit, crochet. I do dabble in a little bit of hand dyeing of yarn, and I talk about my acquisitions, uh, which I do have one as well. I purchased something from a Black Friday sale and it's arrived, so I wanna talk about that. And uh, if there's any sales, I'll flag them along the way as well for my Yarny friends. So I wanna say welcome back to all of the Yarny friends. Uh, I've been reading and loving all of your comments. So let's get stuck into the podcast, shall we? Now, the first one that I've got to showcase are finished objects. And this one came off my needles about, I'm gonna say maybe seven, eight days ago. And here it is. It is one of my choices of knit patterns that I had in my Make Nine card. So the Make Nine card is, I picked nine different patterns in knit and crochet, uh, and I wanted to challenge myself with certain things. So this one was one of them. It is to the pattern from Hoki Locatelli, and it is called the Three Color Cashmere Cow. I know it's quite difficult to say. It is a paid for pattern, and I used four colors in mine, and I switched up the color combinations a little to the pattern, only because of the introduction of an extra color. I did not use Cashmere, but I'll try it on for you. I do have some photographs that I'll include uh, so I'll add them in now and I'll come back in just a moment. So those were a few of the snapshots that I took while making this piece. And at the end, my husband, uh, Chad, was modeling it. So I want to say thank you so much, hubby, for that. So the pattern, here it is. It is from Hoki Locatelli, like I said. It is a paid for pattern and it is called the Three Color Cashmere Cow. I will link this pattern to the description box down below. And yeah, anyone that I mention along the way, whether it's a YouTuber or a tutorial that I'm talking about, go to the description box down below and you'll see all the links to those specific items that I'm discussing. Let's talk about the yarn that I used. I used for the majority in this minty color was a yarn from Ancient Arts Yarns and it is in the colorway Nettle Soft. It's a DK weight. And should you want the details, there it is there. I used in the next band of color, it was a kind of a eucalyptus color to me and it's from Lime Brands Respun, and it's 100% recycled polyester. And this is in the colorway Alpine. The next band was a kind of a Merlot wine purplish color, and it was from Bendigo Woolen Mills. 
and that one also is classified a three weight. In Australia, they use the system called eight ply for three weight yarn or DK, which is double knitting. And that colorway was in claret. And the last and final color that I used was this kind of grassy green color. I really love that color. It was from Vintage DK, which is a Barocco yarn. And the colorway is called, I think this only has a number. It does, 2175. And these are the details, should you need them. Yeah, so that was uh, my one of my Make 9 choices that I was learning a lot from. And the learn for me was a lot of the eyelets and patterns, uh, the eyelets that were knitted up in pattern formation, creating little arrows and in some parts, uh, little flecks within the material. Absolutely enjoyed working that. My Chagu needles that I purchased in a set, the interchangeable sets were used in a 3.25 millimeter. My gauge is a little looser. I have, um, my tension is a, is a little uh, loose. So I had to go down a size in needle so that I could uh, get gauge with the fabric. So I did, I managed it and I'm super happy with the width and the length of it. And it just bunches up really nicely. It's quite warm, so I might have to take it off. So, <laughs> and moving on to the next item that I've got to share with you. There we go. Another last look at that. Absolutely stunning. It's been blocked as well. The next one I have is a super scarf. Not to any pattern, just me learning a new stitch in knit and it's called the Fisherman's Rib Stitch. And I will link some tutorials down below that I found very helpful to learn how to do this stitch. It looks and resembles a little bit of brioche and a one or one by one ribbing. Uh, so it does have a great elasticity to the fabric and it stretches both ways very, very comfortably. So uh, it's going to be hard for me to show you this almost eight foot beauty, but uh, the width of it is about 10 to 11 inches in width and then it is around eight feet. So here we go. <laughs> I'll just show you where it starts off. Super drapey, very squishy. And I have some photographs as well of me clowning around in it. So I will include them here so that you can see what it looks like in its glory. I had so much fun knitting up that Fisherman Rib Stitch Super Scarf and the yarn that I used was a combination of different yarns to get that texture and all those different colours. So the first one here was a cake of Yarnby Sugar Wheels, 100% acrylic in a full worsted weight and it went through a couple of colours. I have one extra ball of this left over. And the colorway is called Warm Gingerbread. I love the colors. They're just amazing. So super, super soft yarn, lovely to work up, does not split. I found it very, very compatible with the type of needles that I was using. So I got this from a wonderful swap that I made with a fellow YouTuber here called Kit. And her channel is called All Things knit and uh, all things crochet and knit with kit. Hi kit. So I had that one. I finished one, one cake of that. And then I included in it was a Bernay super value big stripes. And the colorway of this one is called warm patina. So I finished two balls or two cakes of the warm patina. Really, really liked the color. Now, that yarn was a slightly different density than the um, than the sugar wheels from Yarnby. So what I had done was I included a sock weight yarn and held that together uh, with uh, with with the Bernay yarn. And this one was from Cloudborn Fibers. It is their collection called Superwash Merino 
uh, Sock Twist in Grey Heather. That's the colorway name. So really, really soft. And I used a whole hank of that with the two cakes from the Bernay held together. I had cast on 42 stitches onto my 4.5 millimeter bamboo clover needles. And uh, I found that the width of it stretched out and bulked out with that fisherman ribbed. Normally a garter or a stockinette stitch uh, using these uh, needles and the width of a 442 stitch count means that it sort of like would be a certain width, but with that new stitch that I was learning, the fisherman's uh, ribbed stitch, the actual width of the yarn stretched out a lot because it's a bulkier type of, of material that it creates but I loved it. It was so super squishy and it will be a, a nice warm present, I believe, for the friend that is going to receive that. And I will be seeing him uh, just before Christmas. So a wonderful, wonderful, excited time for me to hand over that gift. And the next thing that I want to talk about is a crocheted item <laughs> as I lean over here, a crocheted item that I completed another amigurumi. So here is my little gnome or elf. I'm holding back here because the sunlight is streaming through the window here. And uh, yeah, so he, <laughs> I love him. He's amazing. Uh, so fluffy. This is going to be an ornament that I'm gifting out. And I used Crystal over at Bag of Days tutorial for the hat for this little fella. And uh, I will include that down below. Her tutorial is called the pine cone gnome but uh, I didn't have a pine cone so I just put uh, one of my amigurumi balls that I made up with button eyes into this little amigurumi here and I used a combination of yarn this fluffy stuff here is I believe a some type of faux fur perhaps maybe it's a Michaels loops and loops and threads brand and the I don't know what the what the green is because I was using some scraps and also with this orange I believe this was the Plymouth Yarns coffee beans in the colorway jewel so yeah I really really enjoyed making him up so he'll hang by a ribbon or a little string and he's got this little twist up here in his cap that uh, he can hang from a tree that way really really cute I used a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook, just this one here. I don't know what brand this is. It was like in Michael's being sold separately in one of those little corral things. And that is that. Next up is a knitted beanie. Yes, you guessed it. It is to my Bush Tracker beanie knitted pattern. And I absolutely love this one. This one was halfway done in my last episode, about here in the herringbone stitch. So I had still to do the crown and it is a gift for my husband. He was gifted it last week on his birthday and he's been wearing it ever since. So he loves it. I love it. It looks great on him. I had to borrow it for today's video so he couldn't wear it today, but I love the fabric. So I held two yarns together to get the weight that I need for this pattern. Uh, it does call for a bulky five. My two weights together was kind of like a light bulk bulky five. And what I had used was uh, Premier Yarns Coffee Shop collection in the colorway turquoise and Lion Brands yarn in the collection called A Touch of Our Angora. And that was in the colorway navy. And that yarn was generously gifted to me by our Crystal here over at Bag o Day. So thank you, Crystal. I love how this fabric turned out. Amazing, amazing soft. So yes. Okay. Now it's on to works in progress. I only have one to share with you this week um, or this episode. And here it is here. Da -da -da -da. I'm working on a, it's a crescent semi-circle shawl and I'm, I'm saying crescent because it actually is having a little arc 
on the top part of the shawl. So it's not really a true semicircle because it is growing and it's, it's growing lovely wings. I really like it. So I'm playing around, it doesn't have a pattern, but I'm playing around with a foundation tutorial that I was watching and absolutely enjoyed following. And that was from our Kerry Penny. And she's the happy crafty homemaker on YouTube here. And I will link this tutorial, which is called the Semi Circle uh, Crochet Shawl or Foundation Crochet uh, Shawl. And I absolutely enjoyed learning so much about it. Penny, Kerry Penny did a wonderful job with uh, explaining the foundation of the different wedge formations that you can choose to make a semicircle shawl with. And I have just embellished on that. So I started off with an eight wedge, which is what the tutorial gears you towards. And then I did a little embellishment, maybe rows, I'm gonna say rows 12 and 13. And I added in some fanning out stitch work. Then I wanted to go back to the wedges and I counted the number and it worked out that a six wedge formation would be a nice kind of number that fit into returning back to the wedges. And so I started off with an eight count wedge and then I went to a six count wedge and I just did more embellishment now here further down, maybe rows say 30 ish. And I have just gone back to my six wedge row uh, repeats. I'm using a, I'm using the Lion Brand Shawl in a Ball and it's in the colorway Soothing Blue. I've got this much left, which is probably a little over half of the ball left. And I'm just gonna keep going with my regular six wedge uh, count. And till I get to around say 20 grams left or 30 grams left of this and then I'll do a fringe of some sort like a, an edging and I might follow the same suit as the fan out stitch work that I'm doing in the sections. So yeah, really enjoying that. Kerry Penny did an amazing job. I'm so happy that I've now learned how to do some construction and foundation to semicircles in crochet. The crochet hook that I used was this Furls Odyssey, and I believe it is a 5.5 or H hook on the bottom there. I think that's a 5.5 millimeter. So that concludes everything that I want to talk about on my finished objects and my work in progress. I do want to update everyone on a yarn that I purchased a while back from Lion Brand. It is their re-up 100 percent recycled cotton <laughs> it's a mouthful to say and I did crochet up a dishcloth that I was intending to use daily so I have been five days of daily use and this dishcloth did not dry out so it got a little stinky I was curious to know how long it would take for this cotton to dry so it took three days now I did read in some comments from when I was presenting this dishcloth um, that people were saying that they've used the reamp and they thought it worked very well for other things like shopping bags, placemats, trivets. And I thought, I understand why now, because on a daily use of getting wet, this cotton isn't the best because it takes so long to dry. It did get quite stinky after five days of having it in my kitchen. So I thought I have other cotton that I have um, tried out before and that's worked out better for daily use for getting wet. But the extra balls that I've got in this one, I'm thinking I might make a basket because it is quite a stiff, stiff and sturdy yarn or a trivet or some placemats. And I do love this stitch. So. If you're interested in finding out more about this particular stitch work, I followed a tutorial from Crystal over at Bag of Day. It's 112, her tutorial number, and it's called the Ripple Stitch Dishcloth or Face Cloth or Washcloth. And it uses uh, the sometimes referred to as the Alpine Stitch. Love it. But this cotton is not good for daily use and getting wet. So, 
I just wanted to flag that. Now on to Happy Mail. I received two Happy Mails. I am so stoked and excited. Now it's never needed. Happy Mail is not ever requested or required uh, to be sent, but it sure does make me feel super happy and I appreciate all of the thoughts, sentiments in cards and also the very, very thoughtful gifts. So thank you, thank you so much. The first person that I received from about a week ago was Faye Makes and oh my goodness, she sent me a box of little goodies. I love, love everything in them. I've opened the box already, read the card, but this is the card. I won't read it uh, on camera. Thank you so much, Faye Makes. And in the box, I got some awesome, awesome teas. So this one here is Yogi Tea and it is sweet tangerine flavor, claiming to give you positive energy. So I do like positive energy. Thank you so much. And this one here is from Lifestyle Awareness and the flavoring is called Organic Ginger Root. I do love tea, so thank you so much for that. And on the same kind of wavelength, I think we might've been crocheting up at the same time, was the tutorial from Bag O Day. So Faye Makes explained to me that she used the gnome cone tutorial from Bag O Day and I was using the same one for my ornament as well. Look at this guy, he's super cute. <gasps> and this yarn for the beard is super soft. I love him. He's gonna go up on my tree and my tree is up. So I was just waiting to make this video and now I can go and put him up. Thank you so much for that. I also received in a beautiful little box with cotton, a little gem. It's a keychain gem that has a, is it a lobster claw? Lobster claw clasp. And it is this ornate, beautiful, navy bluish, kind of almost purpley color bead. I love that. So that's for Chad, my husband. Thank you so much. And he said he likes it and he'll put it on to his keychain. Fame Inks also included something that is very much a unique piece of yarn here and unique for so many reasons because it has new to me fibers that I've never tried before. And they're quite, uh, I guess, not known for North America, but this particular yarn mill area in Vermont called Grandview Farms has a number of these sheep species called Gotland. So the yarn that I'm holding here is 20% Ori and 80% Gotland fibers. It is a DK weight and it has 150 yards and it is classified a fingering weight. I absolutely love it. Now it is a bit toothy and I don't mind that as you're working with some yarns that are a little toothy, you can be a bit more playful with the stitches in case you need to kind of like, you know, um, pull out your needles, your stitch work doesn't slip down and drop stitches. So I really like that it is a little toothy and it has a bit of a sheen to it as well in this heathery gray color. I think that the stitch work will be wonderful and show up very, very nicely with this yarn. I don't know. I think it needs to be put on the needle so I can play with a yarn fiber that I've never tried before. So thank you, thank you, Faye Makes. I really appreciate this. The next thing that I received is Happy Mail came to me yesterday and it was from Doris at Rose Cottage Studio. Now this is the card that she sent. On the front, it says here, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I won't read the message on the inside, but I want to thank Doris so much. She's, she's such a, a notable personality here in the yarn community because she supports so many of us here on YouTube. And she has a channel herself and she doesn't provide video content, 
but she does have a community where there's a lot of interact interaction as well. So if you want to go over and visit Doris, she is from Rose Cottage Studio. Thank you, Doris, for the wonderful card. On to what I got. Very, very small purchase that I made from a yarn company called Stitch Naturally. They were having a 40% off yarn sale for Black Friday. It is now over. Uh, so they always got some sort of sale going on there. So it came in a little like plastic bag. And what I received or what I purchased were two hanks of yarn. And they are from Shashenmeyer. Shashenmeyer, it's really hard to say. That's it there. Shashenmeyer Color Up. And I got two of this colorway. Look at that yarn. Oh my goodness. So I don't have the invoice in front of me, but I believe that these Hanks at their discounted uh, price were 13 US dollars a piece. Oh my goodness. It's really, really soft. Let's take a look. I will uh, read from the label as you admire the colors that I that are in this yarn here. It is a 100 grams, 400 meters, classified as a sock weight yarn, super fine, number one. And the color here is 00081. I think it had a name when I was purchase, purchasing the yarn online. It is a product that is from or made in uh, Italy. The fiber base is, where do I find this? 75%, oh, it's in a different language. I think it's 75% virgin wool and 25% nylon. And I love these colors. They remind me of par uh, like paradise birds or uh, tropical flowers like you might see in Hawaii. Love that. Super, super nice. And inside as well, oh, the folks are so kind over at Stitch Naturally. I got a little ball of, uh, I believe it is 100% another language, cotton, 100% cotton. It's durable coral mini. The color is a number? No, it's called Vintage Green, my favorite color. Very, very shiny cotton. Uh, it is not the softest cotton, but it does have a beautiful shine to it. Maybe when you wash this one up, it might actually relax, uh, but it has a lovely shine. So stitch definition with this yarn would be awesome. Thank you so much, Stitch Naturally. So that's it for the yarny topics of this episode. And if you want to stick around to learn more of the ongoings here in the new to us community, then please do. But if you need to get on with your important things throughout the day, I want to say thank you for watching up this far and I'll see you in the next episode. So what have we been up to in the new community? Well, Hubby and I went on a little bit of a shopping spree. We visited our main strip here and we did a little bit of uh, the craft shops and yarn shops and that was a lot of fun. We ended at the centre where they were actually celebrating and had a sale of potters in the, in the region. So you may or may not know, but I also do pottery and I haven't done it since the pandemic began. So I've been off it for about two years. But in the new neighborhood, I haven't found any outlets for potters uh, in a community sense. And so I jumped in on the chance to go to this sale. I did purchase a few things to support our local artists and potters. And I asked questions. So there is a college, yay, uh, in our neighborhood, which has a public access drop-in schedule. So you become a member of this club and it's... Uh, providing all of the equipment and glazers and places to put your work. I uh, just, uh, I'm like so happy that I found this little, little 
uh, community of potters. So I'm looking into it next week. I'll probably be applying for it and the year starts in January. So every Wednesday, I'll be able to go and do some pottery. So I'm super stoked about that. And we also celebrated my husband Chad's birthday last week. I think I mentioned it somewhere along the way in the video. And what we did was we went to a new, new to us restaurant called Atlas. And it's uh, a lovely fusion of Mexican spices and flavorings and also the type of food that you can get there, like quesadillas and enchiladas, uh, taco. So we uh, that's one of my husband's favorite uh, cuisines is Mexican food. So we celebrated with a few friends that joined us and had a great evening. The place also uh, said that they... If, they, if it's someone's birthday, that they were going to have a special dessert cake on the house. And that was lovely. So it was a carrot cake and it was a nice surprise. Like, who does that nowadays? Like, the, all the prices are increasing and no one really wants to give any, um, I guess, complimentary things nowadays. So it was quite uh, nice to see that that still exists. So what we've been doing in the evenings, winding down in the living room, is switching on the TV and watching some shows, either movies or TV series. And I want to make some suggestions. Perhaps maybe you've watched a few of these before. I'd love to hear your comments and feedback if you have. So Tiger King season two, we're up to episode, I think, three or four. And it is carrying on with the story. Now, Tiger King is a documentary about a life feud that two big cat safari and entertainment shelters are going through they're down based in florida and season one is uh it uh is the the court case hearing and resolving the court case uh i won't spoil it for anyone who hasn't watched it and wants to so season two picks up from where season one left off and it talks about you know further resolving the issues and uh the backstories of deeper investigations into the feud so I'm really enjoying it. It's like a train wreck, but I can't turn away. Uh, not to be confused from the last time that I talked about it, I mentioned it was called Lion King. Now, Lion King is a Disney movie and it has nothing to do with Lion King. This is called Tiger King. So I do apologize for making that mistake. Uh, just enjoying a coffee that I got from Hubby who just got home. So cheers. Uh, the next one that I can recommend on Netflix, because Tiger King is on Netflix, is Dirk Gently Holistic Detective Agency. Now, I watched this probably around three years ago, and I really, really enjoyed it. But a little thumbnail came up in my ex experience or wish list or whatever in the past. And there are a couple of seasons, no longer runs. But that is one show that I really thought was quirky. And it does take a different angle on the whole kind of shell of telling a story. There's a little bit of wackiness in uh, the types of um, characters. So that some of them are, have abilities. Some of them are a little uh, uh, not from out of this world, you could say. <laughs> so I really enjoyed it. And it was filmed in part around where I used to live in Vancouver. So I was seeing uh, trigger images of like places that I know uh, that they that they filmed in. So that was quite meaningful for me. So if that's something that is, is of interest, you should go and check that out. It stars Elijah Wood and it has some comical relief in it as well with uh, quirky and fun uh, dialogue. The uh, next thing that I want to talk about is a movie. Now, this is the second part to The Shining. It's called Dr. Sleep. And I don't know whether it was written by Stephen King, but it was inspired to follow on with the story, The Shining. And it talks about the character, Danny, getting older. And uh, it does take a turn away from, well, it sort of veers back to the main hotel where The Shining is based in. But um, it does take a turn in the direction of talking about The Shining being more of the a gift. Uh, it talks about uh, two sides of the gift, 
one is more of a vampire-ish kind of like culture and the other one is the gifted uh, children or people around the world. So it picks up on Danny's story. It stars Ewan McGregor who plays Danny as the older Danny. And it's um, an interesting, I would say that I wouldn't expect it to be a storyline that follows on from The Shining in that hotel, but it does sort of veer off into an interesting tangent. Um, the last thing that I want to mention is a YouTube YouTube channel out there that is new to me and I it's got nothing to do with yarn, but it talks and investigates about true crime and it's called The Coffee House Crime. And it is hosted by Adrian and he talks about all of the uh, current as well as past cases that have not been aired very much and he does his own investigation so anything that uh, may, may have fallen by the wayside about like missing peoples or mysteries or uh, you know I guess uh, unresolved cases he will open up uh, and talk about them some of them are current as well which is interesting mm -hmm. yeah so I think that's it I hope everyone is doing well and thank you for lasting out this long with me to talk about what's been going on in the community and I hope you've enjoyed all of the yarn talk that I put up front and I will see everyone in the next video. Bye for now.